a desert worm like in Dune or Tremor or maybe a cryptid like the Gobi desert worm obviously cannot exist in real life that's because we all know that worms require moisture to survive so in my desert worms case it's not a worm at all it is an amalgamation of more than 13 different kinds of animals that's why I use the term worm a modified version of worm even though the root of the word worm came from worm I know it sounds weird because all of them pronounce like worm the desert worm is actually more similar to sea cucumber that have adapted to live on land like our ancestors the fish that adapted to live on land the sea cucumber adapted to live on land the skin tissue of sea cucumber has the following layers the cuticles epidermis dermis and catch connective tissue or cct the cuticle and the thick integument forms an effective barrier to water loss a feature which worms lack of the catch connective tissue or mutable collagenous tissue can change stiffness in response to stimulation under nervous control that's why my sand firm able to erect their body in the sand when they've matured. The tentacles are also inspired by the sea cucumbers and its relatives, the crinoids or the sea feathers. That's the first and second groups of animals I've used. The third group of animal is the bobbit worms. The pincer jaws of my worm are the direct copy of the jaws of the bobbit worm. They are from the group of polycythi or bristle worms. The antennae and the muscularized pharynx also reference the bobbit worm and other polycythes. I also use a type of beetle's antennae, the pectinate for the central antennae of the firm. That's the fourth animal. The proboscis is a combination of polycythes jaws and nemertine proboscis. All species of nemertine or ribbon worms have proboscis which lies in the rinkosil when inactive but efforts to emerge just above the mouth to capture the animal's prey with venom. A highly extensible muscle in the back of the ring cell pulls the proboscis in when the an attack ends. Nemerthians of the class Inoka have a stylet, a calcareous barb for the animals to stab their prey many times and inject toxins and digestive enzymes. The prey is then swallowed up whole. The fifth animal group. The shape of the proboscis jaw and the ability to stretch and change shape reference the Maori eel pharyngeal jaw and the flexible snake skull. The pharyngeal jaw of Maori eels, also the first inspiration for the pincer jaws, but I scratched that idea and used the bobbit worm instead after I've done some research. That's the sixth and seventh animals group. Both the behavior of burying its body in the sand and the effaceable proboscis are also referenced to Otoya or Priapulid worms, which also called as worm. If I remember correctly, the Otoya is the ancestor of the Carnictis from the 2005 King Kong that gave us this family-friendly scene.
The Carnitis were also the inspiration for me to create this film. That's the eighth animal group. The felines are a combination of snake fangs and the whale's baleen. It was once used like the whale's baleen to keep the food in but flow the water out by the desert farms and the star that live in the oceans. But once they evolved on land, the felines were used to prevent sand from entering their stomach. The recurve position of the felines and the sharp tip were used to snare their prey, just like what the python does to its prey. That's the ninth and tenth animal groups. The matured felines, sporocytes, got its name from the trematode's worms, or flukes. The sporocytes are used to reproduce asexually, while the sexual reproduction is done by the larvae inside of the morbiex, producing what will be the desert form. The larvae, morphologically, were a direct copy of the rotifers, only with a few changes of the digestive glands and the phalanx position. Even though the sporocyte got its name from thermatodes, the structure of sporocytes is not at all similar to that of the thermatodes. Instead, it was inspired by a type of explosive jellyfish stinging cell, the nematocytes. That's the 11th to 13th animal groups. The parasitoid behavior of the firm was inspired by emerald cockroach wasp. The emerald wasp injects the cockroach with its venom and then lay eggs between the roach's legs incapacitating it while the egg hatched and burrow into the guts of the cockroach. The Morbiac hosts were inspired by a single-cell parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. They can exert a strange sort of mind control on the rodents. Once infected with the brain parasite, rodents such as rats and mouse seem to lose their fear of cats and become more likely to get eaten. When they are digested by the cats, the microbe can make its way into the feline intestine to reproduce. The term morbiex was a modification of the word morbid and maniac, since the host gone berserk after infected by the larvae and the venom of the worm. It's Morbid Time. The worm use two methods of aggressive mimicry, in which they mimic another harmless object or organism. In the first case, the tentacles resemble the plant Kurup. Kurup was another name for a real world plant called Welwichia a plant that can live for thousands of years. I made the curb red this purple because it has anthocyanin, a pigment to protect the plant from the sun's radiation. Another mimicry behavior is that when they undergo metamorphosis or metagenesis, the body will be similar to that of the dead palm tree. The tentacles will be similar to the fruit, the brown bristles of the flames will be similar to the dry leaves of the tree, the color and the texture of its body will look similar to the tree from afar. This behavior allows them to prey upon both sentient and wild creature of Pentium. That's all for today's entry. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe, support my channel, 
so that it can grow and I can do it more oftenly with my wholehearted passion. Thank you.